information technology uh, and uh, industry and commerce from the youngest state in India today, the state of Telangana. And I keep calling it the startup state. Uh, I'm guessing many of you are from Hyderabad. How many? Okay, pretty much all of you. Anybody who's not from Hyderabad? Okay, there are a few. All right, good, good seeing you all. Um, so I call my state a startup state. There is a reason why I call it a startup state. See, when you get an opportunity to make a clean slate beginning, when you get an opportunity to start off without the burden of legacy, without the burden of uh, somebody weighing heavily on your uh, shoulders, on your head, I think you can make a lot of uh, uh, innovative beginnings. And that's exactly what we've tried to do in the state of Telangana. When we started off about two and a half years ago, on the 2nd of June 2014, our Honorable Chief Minister, Shri K. Chandrasekhar Ogar, who's uh, led the Telangana agitation from the front, is a firm believer in one theory. He believes that no individual or no institution is a repository of wisdom. He believes very firmly that nobody knows everything. To, for a leader, for a minister, for a chief minister, or for any individual to think that I know everything, I'm an expert at everything would be a fallacy. So therefore, when he, when he, when he started off uh, with his young state of Telangana, and especially with respect to technology, especially with respect to innovative policy making, he has given us a clear mandate. He said, do not reinvent the wheel. He said, learn from the best. Imbibe the best practices from across the world. You don't have to start from scratch on everything. You don't have to worry about being, you know, a, a very, very innovative in terms of uh, being novel and path breaking. He said, if there are good policies out there, if there are uh, uh, good ideas out there, pick them up, make them your own, and make sure you actually follow through and do a good job of it. So that's how when we started thinking about coming, coming out with our IT policy, coming out with our industrial policy, we started. Uh, uh, we started on the right earnest. We started visiting places. We started talking to thought leaders. We started talking to different uh, political leaders who were very experienced. We started talking to industry leaders, and then that's how we, formula we started formulating our policies. But even before I come to that, I'd like to share with you one thing. In fact, uh, uh, as was mentioned earlier, we've come out with India's largest technology incubator today in Hyderabad. It's called the TIHA. Before I uh, uh, go any further, I'd like to play a very small uh, video for you, which kind of sets the tone as to what we are like. We, we are talking about with respect to innovation and uh, technology ecosystem. Somebody can get the lights here. Can you get the lights. Yeah. Okay.
whatever it takes for us to foster that is what we're going to focus on. The last one year at T Hub has been incredible. We have startups being born every day. We have corporates moving in and wanting to solve innovation challenges. We've got events happening all over the place in various fields. And we've got funding happening also. So it's been incredible. I'm sure there are uh, students from uh, mechanical engineering, automotive, uh, automobile engineering. Are, are, are you there? Nobody? Okay. The 3D mantra, as, as they call it, which applies to you guys, define, design, deliver. It holds true even today. I, I think it works even today in your world. But in, 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 the, in, the, in the shifting, in the fast changing economic landscape that the world has become today, the digitally connected space it has become today. I think it's important that you actually innovate very, very quick. Also, incubate even quick, even more quickly and incorporate at the same pace. Because if you think about it for a second, today the next big idea can come from anywhere in the world. Your physical location, the physicality of your location does not matter. Because you could be in Siberia, you could be in Chennai, you could be in Hyderabad, you could be in Timbuktu, you could be anywhere in the world as long as you have an idea that works, as long as you have an idea that has merit in it, I think you can have the world at your feet. Now, having said that, it's, it's easier said than done, I know. So therefore, we wanted to give this a bit of a thought. So when we started thinking about what to do, in fact, when I assumed office as a minister on the 2nd of June, 2014, I asked my IT secretary, Jay Shandir, who's somewhere here, I questioned, I said, uh, well, uh, Hyderabad has done reasonably well after Y2K, 1998, the late 90s, and then uh, eventually when India started getting some business in the IT space, more so mostly the back office support kind of space, the support kind of work, we said we've done okay, we've created some jobs, we've done reasonably well, but what is the next big opportunity? And we started then talking to a lot of students, a lot of youngsters, and then what I've realized is, today's youngsters of India, like you guys, are not content. You guys are not happy in just be the back office of the world. You guys don't want India to be this tech support center, or if I have to put it bluntly, a BPO for the world. You want more. 
You aspire for more. In fact, you feel that if a Zuckerberg can do it, if a you know, Larry or a Sergi can do it, why can't I do it? In the technology space, where technology is the greatest leveler, where technology is the greatest enabler, where technology enables anybody who has an idea to actually ride a wave of growth, ride a wave of an opportunity, and deliver the goods, and deliver solutions for the world, you guys believe that Indians have it in there. And I actually absolutely confidently can say that Indians possibly today have the best shot at solving the world problems than ever before. And the reason why I say this is because as a country today, if you look at India, the world is getting older, but India is getting younger. Today, India, more than 50% of the population is at a median age of 29, unlike ever in the history of this world. More than 65% of the population today in India is less than the age of 35. That makes us the country with the largest workforce on the planet. America is aging. China is aging. Most of our competition across the world, most of our competition which we compete with for investments, with, for ideas, etc., is aging fast. Now that is where India's great opportunity lies. So therefore, when we started thinking, I'll just give you an example. How many of you use uh, WhatsApp here? I think everybody. How many of you don't use WhatsApp here? What is wrong with you? <laughs> so we all use WhatsApp, right? Now when WhatsApp was being evaluated, and Facebook decided to purchase or buy, buy out WhatsApp, they evaluated it at $19 billion. $19 billion. I almost fell off my chair. I think most guys my age, a lot of their chairs also. It confused a whole lot of us, you know, it just, you know, it just didn't make any sense to us. But I think it infused a whole bunch of youngsters across the world. Now they feel, they believe that ideas as simple as WhatsApp, I mean, if you think about it, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, none of these are rocket sciences. None of these are things that we could not have discovered ourselves. None of these are extremely complicated protocols or products. They're extremely simple products, simple, ingenious ideas, which have today transformed the way we communicate with each other. Now therein lies the beauty. $19 billion, yes, confused me, but enthused a whole generation of youngsters. Now, the bigger question I ask myself is, would an Indian youngster, would he have thought of this? Maybe, potentially, yes. But maybe he just didn't know what to do with such an idea. That's when we said, now let's give them a chance.